I'm your host, Elmos. Welcome to another video. Joining me for Elementalists, Chapter 6 Three Omens. Aster. Aster! You take Aster's limp body, which is slumped over the counter. Overhead, the hootlings take flight again, screeching in agitation. Panicked, you look around. Oh god, what do I do? What do I do? Uh, Aster stirs, letting out a groan and pushing herself up. That was a strong one. I think I might need to sit down. She wobbles, and you quickly take her by the shoulders, guiding her onto the bench by the clothing racks. Are you okay? What the hell was that? Aster gives you a tired smile. I'll be fine. My my branching is rarely ever that intense. I, I just need a few minutes. Branching? Is that what you call fortune-telling? That's not quite it. Branching refers to my ability to extend my awareness into the trees around me to see and hear what they do. It's how I tap into the discussions that are always happening in the natural world around us. I've been able to do it for some time, but... She shuts her eyes as though hit with a, another wave of dizziness. This branching, it... It looks like it hurts you. It can't be safe to do something that takes so much out of you, can it? Just as is a tune, must be careful not to attempt magic beyond their abilities. Wood nymphs must be aware of their boundaries when branching. It's difficult to extend your consciousness outside of your own body. Dangerous, too, to untether yourself from the physical form like that. I overreached just now. Not to pry, but do you zone out like that a lot? You did it the last time I was here, too. Aster shivers slightly. The leaves in her hair droop. They're green, losing vibrancy. Sometimes the trees want to show me things, so they draw me into them so that I can see what they're seeing. It can be difficult to understand them since they primarily communicate through sight and feelings. And they rarely try to speak to me like they did just now, the, since I don't know their ancient language. Aster, that vision, or whatever it is you just had, at the end of it, it seemed like you were trying to warn me about something. Aster rubs at her temples and with a wince. I'm not sure what I said to you just now. The, the tree's emotions were so strong that I felt them taking me over, but now they're all muddled. I sense that much is troubling you, though you're... Energy is restless. Perhaps my message had to do with... Oh, I'm being no help at all. Aster, don't worry about it. You literally just passed out. There's no need to push yourself. You're too kind, Ezekiel. I can see why your sun attuned warmth just radiates off of you. Starts to rise, her legs wobbling slightly. Please don't worry about me. I'm, I'm feeling much better, however. Well, I'm not sure if it, uh, if this will be any help, but I have been studying the ancient tree language, and I think I recognized a word just now, perhaps two. It didn't quite make sense to me, but they may help you better understand what's happening in your life. I could really use some answers about that. Well, literally everything that's been going on these days. I'll have to strain a bit to remember exactly what the trees were trying to say, but I should be okay. I'd really like to help you if I can. Asking Aster for information will give you a clue into the mysterious events plaguing you, as well as a chance to learn more about Aster's wood nymph abilities. Anyone else want to make a wood joke? <laughs> Moving on, but don't worry about it. You should take it easy right now. I don't want to make where you yourself out for my sake. Thank you, Ezekiel. I, I appreciate your kindness. The ladies her hair rustle, and she turns towards the front of the shop. Oh, your friend has just finished up the next door. He'll be wanting to head back to school soon. Good luck at tryouts, Ezekiel. Ah, uh, thanks, Aster. Take care of yourself, okay? So the customer enters the shop, and Aster waves you off with a smile.
You and Griffin arrive at the Thief Arena, where several hopefuls are already gathered, and you look around the massive stadium in awe. Wow, I'm starting to see how big of a deal Thief is. You spot Zeph on the sidelines, he notices you and waves. Hey, Ezekiel, good luck, but uh, don't, be, don't be mad when I kick your butt. An under upperclassman walks briskly your way. You really know how to cut it close, don't you, Langley? I thought you were flaking on me. Griffin takes out a new thief flag and opens his mouth to respond, but the upperclassman waves a hand flippantly. Don't want to hear it. Just give me the flag and I'll let you get back to chilling with whoever your friend is. Griffin clenches his jaw, but then lets out a breath and speaks with a forced calm. This is Ezekiel Winchester. If he makes a team, we'll officially have a sun at on the roster. Captain's eyebrows shoot up. Ezekiel, this is Everett Morksayer, a captain. Hmm, team's never had a sun ad on it before. I hope you do well, and not just because it'll look good for me to have you on the field. Honestly, you'd be lucky to have me. You'd just better hope that uh, when I make the cut, I like Thief enough to stick around. Confident. You remind me of me, Winchester, and I respect that. Maybe. Or maybe I'm just gonna kick your ass when I'm done here. We'll be starting in five. We'll look forward to seeing what you can do out there, fr Freshy. Snatches the flags from Griffin and walks away. He's kind of, um... Intense. More like an a-hole. That's the captain for you. The best thing to do when he gets worked up is just let him run out of steam. So, head up, heads up for when you're on the team. You take a longer look at the other students swarming up. Familiars play together on the lawn while several upperclassmen cast spells. What's with the magic some of them are doing? I thought tryouts hadn't started yet. Plenty of players use air magic to s for speed and agility boost during the game. It's totally legal, so it's become common during tryouts, too. And I'm missing Hogwarts already. Too bad I can't do anything like that. Tim materializes in your arms. But, uh, good thing I got you. Right, buddy? What do you say? Ready to give me a hand out there? Tim leaps onto your head, and you feel like some slime from his webbing seep into your hair. Uh, hang on. I just remembered. I think I have something else that'll help, too. You dig around in the book bag for a marble Shreya bought you for your first day at Pinnergast. Yes, this is an air elemental. I might be able to get an air boost after all. Having Tim and Air Magic on your side will give you double the options to get through each round of trials. Oh, well, this should help even the playing field against all those upperclassmen. And remember, it's a one-time use. I feel like we might need it again. Remember, marble one-time use. Save it for later. It might come in handy some other time. I just gotta hold on to it for now. Besides, I have Tim. <laughs> Carefully place the marble back inside its case, which you return to the book bag. Five minutes later, the captain blows his whistle, directing everyone to a ward circle in the corner of the field. Griffin hands out belts, each with a single flag hanging from him. He stops in front of you with a grin. I know you don't need any luck from me, because you'll totally kick butt out there, but good luck anyway. Can't wait to have you on my team. He hands you the belt, and you tie it around your waist. Ah, uh, thanks. I hope I live up to your expectations. Alright, here's how tryouts are gonna go. There'll be a series of rounds to test you on various skills essential to Thief. You'll be facing off against each other, so pretend this is a match and keep your cool. I'll be watching you from the stands. He and Griffin head into the stands, which are hidden behind the dome's wards. You can still hear his voice clearly when he calls out. In a real match, teams would start on opposite sides of the arena, but you won't have a team to strategize with today. Things will reset each round, so don't worry too much about losing your flag. I just want to see what you can do. Everybody ready? 
He blows his whistle again, and the terrain starts to shift. You find yourself in a wide open meadow with nowhere to hide. You and the other hopefuls eye each other warily. Here we go. May the best of tune win. Don't get your hopes up, fresh meat. I want to get a feel for your close range skills here. The next five minutes are an all out melee. Protect your flag with all you've got. Ready, go! Two players start towards you, their eyes on your flag. This one's mine. Get your own target. Big talk from someone who isn't going to make the team. Ooh, ooh, I got an idea. Why don't you steal each other's flags? Oh, wouldn't that be funny? This went from zero to 100 real quick. I need to gaze at the clouds, get Tim's help, the flowers at them. Your flowers off of the stems as your opponents come near. When they're a couple of feet from you, you toss the petals in their faces. Gah! Stop! Leave me alone! Ah! Chew! He doubles over and the other player pushes him out of the way. Thanks, losers! She snatches your flag and runs off with it. I I imagine that differently in my head, like pollen going into their eyes and... It stopped one of them, just not both of them. Shit! Okay, the name calling was unnecessary. Soon the open field melts away and you find, soon find yourself in a dungeon. The air smells stamp and a chill breeze blows through the cavernous hallways. Ah, my home! A flag hangs from a nearby scones. You take it and attach it to your belt. Some terrains work against us, amplifying any sounds we make. This round, I want you to be stealthy. Sneak up on your opponents and steal their flags. You slowly make your way through the dungeon. Your shoes echoing with every step. You peer around a corner and find another player looking around nervously. Ah, someone we haven't met before. It's way too much like the catacombs from Double Undead Zombies Wrath. Starts to head away from you. Here's my chance. I need to capture a flag and get away without being noticed. I should tiptoe, crumble the wall, sprint, tiptoe. With her back to you, you sneak up on her and snatch her flag. Ah! I'm out of here. You dart down a side hallway and are long gone before her cry of panic attracts anyone else to your location. 1-1. One, one. The third round sets you in a rocky forest where sunlight streaks through the branches and birds chirp cheerily above. For this round, I want to see you use magic to capture each other's flags. This is where you can be flashy. Impress me. You jog through the forest for a while, keeping your eyes peeled for flashes of movement through the thick foliage. I think this is where you should blend in with your foliage and wait. You run into a clearing and your footsteps approaching. Suddenly the student you faced at the start of the tryout burst out of the undergrowth. You're still in this? She just gets to a stop when she sees you. You're both frozen for a moment. And then she starts backing away slowly towards the trees. Not running away, are you? She lets out a scoff and settles into an offensive stance. Hmm. Fresh meat's guthier than he looks. Don't tell me you're looking for a showdown. Bitch, let's go. Eh, what's the whole point of trials, isn't it? Maybe the best of tune win. Last guy beats at the same thing, but if you think you can do better, by all means. Okay, Leviosa. <laughs> I'm floating! And, and there's your flag. Bye! You zero on the flag hanging from her belt, your mind working quickly to formulate a plan to steal it. Trap her in a tree, soak her with lake water, set her jersey on fire. Trap her in the trees. Tim, I need you for this. Oh! You actually feel a burst of power shoot through you. Time to end this showdown. You channel the power into the ground, and then up to the tree roots. The branches around your opponents start closing in around her. No, wait! Bye! One of the branch twigs twin twines around her flag, tears it free while the others suck her away deeper into the foliage. Ah! You retrieve her flag from the tree with a smirk. I guess you should have run away when you had the chance. With a flag in hand, you turn tail and dash into the forest to find your next opponent. 
The terrain changes suddenly. You find yourself in a spooky forest, completely silent, save the calling of a crow in the distance. After a few minutes of trekking, a murky lake comes into view. You turn slowly around, trying to see through the mist that hangs low all around you. 2-1, we're going for 3-1. Where is everyone? You hear a quiet splash and spin back towards the lake. Movement just below the surface catches your eye. You step up to the edge to peer in. Oh, hi, it's me. Reflection reaches for you just below the water's surface. Ah! Scrabble back as his hand pierces the surface of the wall water. Cold fingers slip off your ankle, failing to grab hold. Tim leaps in front of you. Blech. Through your pulse pounding fiercely in your ears, you're faintly aware of a whistle cutting through the clearing. The forest dissolves before your eyes, taking your reflection with it. The default arena reappears. All around, students stand in comical postures, mid-sprint or halfway through casting spells. The captain blows his whistle again from the stands. I'll take 2-1. Alright, I've seen enough to make my decision. When I call your name, come up to the stands, I'll let you know if you've made the cut. Hold on a second. What about that thing that attacked me? He turns to stare at you. You were matching... You were watching from the stands, did you... See it come out of the lake and try to grab me? Freshie, if something tries to grab you in a game of theft, it's an opponent trying to get your flag. You're gonna have to get used to it. It w isn't an opponent if they look exactly like me and they want to drown me. I understand that Thief might be a little overwhelming if you've never played before, but if you uh, make the key team, you'll have to drop the theatrics. Excuse me, theatrics? How about you try being almost pulled into a lake? Whoa, Freshy, deep breaths. Just, what did I literally just tell you? With that, the captain turns his attention to calling people up to the stands to get their results. Nice to have you looking out for me, Cap. <laughs> Tim nuzzles your face one last time, then disappears into the ether. No, Tim, come back. You're my only friend. Come back, please. When the captain calls you to the stands, he's flipping through a clipboard, his legs slung up on the back of the chair in front of him. He glances up at you and sets the clipboard aside. Okay, dang. Where have you been all my life? It almost hurts my pride to say this, but the team needs you. He sits up straight. What I'm saying is congrats, you've made varsity. Oh, um, thank you, that's uh, really uh, great. I get that you were kind of spooked by the last terrain, but don't worry, we practice terrain preparedness extensively. You can expect an official practice schedule by the end of the week. I'm glad to have you on my team, Winchester. How many freshmen get the honor? He holds out a hand, and you take it. Still stunned, he gives you a quick, firm shake, and directs his attention back towards the field. Next up, Zephyr Hernandez. This is where Zeph begins a five-minute explanation of how he's called Zeph instead of Zephyr. You make your way outside, wait for Zeph, so you can tell him about the reflection's appearance in the lake. But when he appears, the soldiers are slumped and his expression is downcast as he mumbles to himself. There's one dream up in smoke. Classic Zeph. Couldn't make the cut. Oh no, not more bad news. Zeph spots you and pulls a smile onto his face. <laughs> Captain told me the news, uh... Congrats! I knew you'd make it if you tried. And Varsity, too! I only made JV, but, uh, oh well, right? I shouldn't have, uh, bought that the special jersey. Uh, I can't believe I was so sure I'd get on a Varsity. Uh, stupid, right? Forces a laugh. Well, uh, JV will be fun, too. You just gotta work your way up, man. I've been there. You'll still be playing Thief, which is kind of the point, isn't it? Totally. Think of it as, uh, as us JV players breaking into the field for your epic varsity matches. You're welcome in advance. Glances back towards the Thief Stadium. Honestly, I don't even know why I'm surprised. I, I didn't make it... It's not like... Catching himself suddenly, forcing the smile back onto his face. Uh, sorry, it's... It's not really a big deal. It just hurts a little bit in the in the moment, you know? 
It'll be over by dinner. Zeph, why don't we just... Why don't we get some lunch and talk? We don't even have to talk about Thief. Just something to cheer you up. I'm totally fine. And I'm gonna head back to my next class early and get a bit extra studying and, you know, keep ahead of the curve. He casts one more glance towards the Thief Stadium and the smile fails. See you later, Ezekiel. Eh. Like I said, bust your ass. You'll get to the varsity. He starts to walk away, a soldier slumped, postured, dejected. Not making the varsity team has really got him down. There's your chance to cheer up Zaf and learn more about his goals. Nope. Give him some space. I don't want to seem like I'm rubbing it in that I made varsity. I'll check up on, on him later. Besides, I have myself to worry about. First Astor's message, and then my reflection showing up in the middle of trials. Grab your hands over the goosebumps that arise on your arms, and then head on to the main building. You're passing through the foyer when Shreya comes flying down the stairs. Her hair streaming behind her, she leaps the last two steps and almost runs straight into you. Nice to see you, Shreya. Watch out! You catch her by the waist, she grabs your shoulders to stabilize herself. As her momentum spins you both around, she lets out a breathless laugh. Look at you, sweeping me off my feet while I was on my way to lunch. You were sprinting to lunch? Do not judge. Rumor has it that the Chef Gillespie Saint... God, your name is really long and... Montreal is, is catering today. He has three Michelin stars and five Divry goblets. He made the menu for the Sweet Sixteen Gala, but we had to get on the wait list two years in advance. She separates herself from you, then realizes how you're dressed. Why do you look like... Questions at your outfit. That. Um, well, I was at the Thief trial, so I made the team, but... No way. I heard Pinnagos goes all out for Thief. The parties are everything. You're going to be campus famous. Shreya, listen. Something seriously weird is going on. You tell her all about the events of your day so far. As she listens, her smile falls away. Do you think Aster was trying to tell you about your reflection coming out of the lake, or something else? I think I need to look for answers. Hey, enough of this. I'm gonna go try to blend in approach. Keeping my head down hasn't done anything for me so far. More and more bad things have been happening. If I don't take action, I won't stand a chance against whatever's coming for me. Spoken like a true fighter. So what's the plan? Let out a heavy sigh and rub a hand down your face. Honestly, don't know. Heartfelt wasn't for me, but at least it wasn't dangerous. Like, there wasn't any magical forces out to get me. How am I supposed to know how to handle this? Like, it's it's not like I took a fighting mysterious evil forces class 101. Like, wait, do they have those here? No, but... I'm here. With me at your side, some wispy shadows and reflection that doesn't do your gorgeous face justice won't be any problem. Are you... are you hitting on me? Start to smile, and Shreya sets a hand on your shoulder. I don't want you to lose all your wonder for the magical world yet. I'll make sure this place stays special for you, and that, that means helping you stay safe. And if there's one person you can count on, it's a mystery. The magical community's most trusted helping hand since... 1202. That... Did you just try and sell something? <laughs> <laughs> the best carpet cleaning since 1908! What? What? Shreya, have I ever told you how much I appreciate you? I hope you're right. You're beautiful when you're being super competent. Mm. We'll repay the compliment. So, like all the time. 
Literally 24-7, I may be the sun at, but you're the radiant one in this equation. Oh, you flatter. Oh, stop, and by stop, I mean keep going. You both laugh, the warm sound ringing through the sunlit foyer. You know what, uh, the dining hall just won't cut it for lunch today. The Galipsy Saint Montreux meal needs more ambience. What are you saying? I'm saying, let me take you on a picnic. We haven't tried all the knobs on our portal door. Let's sneak out some lunch the, from the dining hall and eat somewhere new. I guess a change of scenery would be nice. Campus feels more and more like a nebulous force of evil. If anyone deserves to get away from campus for a relaxing, worry-free picnic, it's you. Plus, you'll have my stellar company. You can try all my St. Montreal favorites. And in before diamonds. One on wine with Shree after, pa after a packed morning. Enjoy some magical treats and get a glimpse of her life that you haven't seen yet. Huh. I just noticed that top is transparent. Just saying. Maybe some other time. Like, when I'm not in sweaty athletic gear and still recovering from almost being pulled into a lake, sure. Oh, I didn't mean to push you to do something you didn't want to. Oh, no, I want to. Just, Pixelberry won't allow me. We're not allowed to have love interest if there's, you know, no money involved. It's not that. A picnic sounds nice, and I, I just don't think it, I'd be the best comedy right now. I need a shower, probably a nap. That's fair. You've been through a lot. I'll sneak an eclair out of the dinning, dinner hall for you. You're the best, Shreya. Make it a Long John's with cream filling inside, and you've got yourself a deal. I don't... don't I know it. You go relax and unwind. You deserve it. You wave goodbye to Shreya, and head upstairs towards your dorm. Your thoughts return to your reflection. After a few minutes, you find yourself in a dead end in an unfamiliar part of the school. It literally looks like every part of the school. What is with today? Have I racked up some bad karma without realizing it? What the? I wasn't going to do the shriek sound. I don't even know what the shriek sound sounds like right now. It's been around just in time to duck as a shadowy figure hurdles at you. <laughs> it's not like the first monster you face. This one's taller, looming over you with deadly claws extended. Out of sinister darkness begins filling the hallway as though evil itself is radiating from its body. Suddenly, it lunges at you. Holy! You barely manage to throw yourself out of the way. <laughs> Can I run this thing? Throughout the story, you'll have chances to use specific spells you've learned so far. Can you defend yourself against the shadow monster? Unlock all spells to reach your full potential. I don't know when. You try to focus on the air spell Becca taught you in the library, but your heart is racing, and you can't gather your thoughts. So even though we picked the f***ing spell we knew- No, no, I can't do that. <laughs> Tim, I need you. Tim materializes on your shoulder, and you immediately feel him channel his magic energy into you. <laughs> You're going down, monster. With Tim's help, air magic courses through you. You use it to lift the shadow monster off the ground. Oh. Yes, take that, you... Oh. Monster flails around and you feel your control over the spell weakening. Then, with a snap, your spell breaks and the monster falls to the floor. Oh. Monster shakes off your magic and then flies at you again. It's a shriek jarring your teeth. Oh. All you can do is throw yourself, your arms up to defend yourself. You catch a glimpse of Tim leaping in front of you to protect you. <laughs> Tim, no! Get out of the... Be gone! Mr. Swans gets to a stop in front of you and Tim and casts a blinding white light. Oh god, it is blinding. When your vision clears, Tim races to your side, shaking in fright. 
A shivering form disappears into the ether, and you see the nearly shapeless mass of monster on the ground, its shadows roiling weakly around it as her swan motions you frantically after her. Ezekiel, follow me. There's no time to lose. You start to follow her down the hall, but notice something glowing in the monster's vague form. Its glow dissipates as you bend down to examine it. A rough rock. You slip the rock into your book bag. As soon as you do, the shadow dissipates, leaving no trace of the monster behind. Ezekiel, please! You're in grave danger, and you must follow me if you want my help. Scramble after Professor Swan, the mysterious rock heavy in your book bag, and the promise of answers finally in sight. Hmm, we shall see. Oh, look at that, a cliffhanger. Who did not see that one at all coming? Oh, I did not. <laughs> okay, so. Interesting. Interesting. A bigger, more sinister monster. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm liking where this is going. Um, so what did you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. I really have nothing else to really say about it. Again, I liked it. Not bad. Um, yeah, yeah. We got Big Country Sky next. Just saying. In case you uh, ain't over, all here, over here on Twitch watching it live, you know what I'm saying? Just look forward to it. You can always tune in. It's down in the description. Without further ado, I will catch you all in the next video. See ya!